Hey, how are you doing? I'm Simon, and I'd like to chat directly to anyone out there that denies that humans are warming our planet through the burning of fossil fuels for energy. It seems to be quite a widespread belief among many people, even in Japan, where I'm speaking from. I'm not a scientist, but if you deny the impact of human actions on our climate, then I'll assume you aren't a scientist either. So I'm not here to discuss the science, although if anyone wants to drop a comment in the box below, we can discuss it there. I'm just here today to mention a few things to you. Bear with me, if after the video you still want to deny human caused climate change, well, we'll get to that later. So let's rewind a little, let's time travel back to the swinging 60s, August 1966 to be precise. England had just won the World Cup, and for the first and thankfully only time, James Garvey, who was then the president of Bitnumus Coal Research Inc, was discussing the state of pollutants in the coal industry, Mining Congress Journal. Incredibly, at the outset of his article, he is very candid about the far-reaching aspects of the air pollution problem. Now, remember, this is 23 years before climate change became publicly known. He goes on to say, Emissions of CO2 under serious study among the gaseous materials discharged from the stack is carbon dioxide. This is not generally considered to be a pollutant in as much as it has never been demonstrated to have any adverse effects on plants or animals. However, to illustrate the far-reaching aspects of the air pollution problem, it should be noted that serious studies are underway to determine whether more restrictions should be placed on the emissions of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. There is evidence that the amount of carbon dioxide in the Earth's atmosphere is increasing rapidly as a result of the combustion of fossil fuels. If the future rate of increase continues as it is at the present, it has been predicted that because the CO2 envelope reduces radiation, the temperature of the Earth's atmosphere will increase and that vast changes in the climate of the Earth will result. Such changes in temperature will cause melting of the polar ice caps, which, in turn, would result in the inundation of many coastal cities, including New York and London. Now, forgive me here, but for a second there, it seemed as if the coal industry itself was admitting that its beautiful black gold does in fact increase CO2 levels, which in turn raise temperatures. Boom! For most people, that is what in the industry is called a smoking gun. But not for Scotty in marketing, no. That's bullshit. So, let's get back in our time machine and fast forward a bit. Off we go to 1982, two weeks before Michael Jackson released his album Thriller. The world's largest oil company Exxon Mobil was releasing its own thriller titled CO2, Greenhouse Effect. Ooh, this document wasn't released to the public though. In fact, it was for their eyes only. In this secret document, the company's manager of environmental affairs programs, M.B. Glaser, states the following. The buildup of CO2 in the atmosphere has been monitored continuously at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's NOAA Observatory at Mauna Loa, Hawaii and periodically in other places since 1957. In addition to observing a trend between 1957-1979 that showed atmospheric CO2 increasing from 315 to 337 parts per million and that there is little doubt about these observations indicate a growth of atmospheric CO2. Now take a look at Exxon Mobil's own chart here. Take a look at that beauty over there. Wow! Not only have Exxon Mobil scientists correctly identified that CO2 levels were in fact rising, and they were rising because of human burning of fossil fuels from the Industrial Revolution on, but they did an incredible job of predicting, down to a fucking T, that if we continue to burn fossil fuels at a present rate, that by 2020 CO2 levels would hit 422 parts per million, and the global temperatures would rise to between, wait for it, 1 and 1.2 degrees. I mean, that right there is wonderful science. Clap on the back, Exxon. The 2019 levels are 415 parts per million, but by next year that's going to be 420 parts per million, and it's 1.1 degree warmer now than it was prior to the Industrial Revolution. They hit the nail on the fucking head way back in 1982. They also predicted that by 2080 temperatures would increase by between 2.6 and 3.4 degrees. Now look at our current projection again. These geniuses got it very accurate. They knew their shit. And they made, if they'd made this public back then, we could be breathing clean air today and focusing on perfecting our fucking golf swing rather than worrying about the mass extinction. They not only correctly predicted the correct level of CO2 and temperature rise by 2020, but they also fucking 
said this, at the low end of the predicted temperature range there could be some impact on agricultural growth and rainfall patterns and at the high end some scientists suggest there could be considerable adverse impact including the flooding of some coastal land masses as a result of a rise in sea level due to melting of the Antarctic ice sheet. If the Coal Journal article was the smoking gun then this report was the confession. But we ain't done. Those crafty Dutch bastards at Shell were also at it. Back in the time machine, not so far this time, forward we go to 1988. And the Dutch were just about to win the 1988 European Championships. The scientists presumably celebrated this triumph after burying the evidence that could have saved our fucking skins. They discuss in their report that global temperatures would likely rise between 1.5 and 3.5 degrees due to the burning of greenhouse gases. They predicted significant changes in sea level, ocean currents, rainfall patterns, regional temperatures and weather. They are not done. They also forecast, and I'm directly quoting, that these fast and dramatic changes would impact on the human environment, future living standards and food supplies, and could have major social, economic and political consequences. These are all things that are now coming to pass. Say what you will about them, but Exxon and Shell certainly know a good fucking scientist when they see one. These absolute assholes knew this, again. This is a direct quote. By the time the global warming becomes detectable, it could be too late to take effective countermeasures to reduce the effects or even stabilize the situation. I mean, my fuck. They knew that staying silent would mean that when we finally notice the effects, it would be too late to reverse the situation, and they buried this like a dog in the fucking garden. And just in case your brain is insane in the membrane, they state the following. With fossil fuel combustion being the major source of CO2 in the atmosphere, a forward-looking approach by the energy industry is clearly desirable, seeking to play its part with governments and others in the development of appropriate measures to tackle the problem. Now, most people of a sane disposition watching this will look at these three reports and conclude that these companies knew what they were doing, they knew the dangers, they knew what would happen, and they did nothing. In fact, they didn't do nothing. What they did was go on to found right-wing think tanks like the Heartland Institute in the US, the Institute of Economic Affairs in the UK, and the Institute of Public Affairs in Australia. These think tanks went on to disseminate lie after lie after lie, denying that burning fossil fuels led to increased CO2 or temperature rise. And they are still doing it today. Although now, the denial has adapted slightly. Today, climate change is happening, but it isn't being caused by humans. So, there's nothing we can do to stop it. So, carry on as normal. Shop till you drop, bitches. This should be enough evidence for any man, woman, or child of reasonable mental faculties to conclude that climate change is real and is being caused by our burning of fossil fuels. But, no, not for Scotty in marketing or Dave down the bastard pub. These are all lies spread by kale-munching, city-dwelling libtards. Jesus fucking Christ, man. It's enough for a man to tear his hair out. Now, I could, and for my own sanity probably should, leave it there, but let's have a little look at what the CEOs of these fossil fuel companies have to say about man-made climate change today. Just in case their scientists have changed their minds, this is from those tree-hugging bitches at Chevron. We recognize and share the concerns of governments and the public about climate change. There is a widespread view that the increase in atmospheric greenhouse gases is a contributor to climate change, with adverse effects on the environment. This is ConocoPhillips. We recognize that human activity, including the burning of fossil fuels, is contributing to increased concentrations of greenhouse gas in the atmosphere that can lead to adverse changes in global climate. Exxon Mobile in 2014. The risk of climate change is clear, and the risk warrants action. Also Exxon Mobile in 2014. We know enough, based on the research and science, that the risk is real and appropriate steps should be taken to address that risk. Here is Shell 
CO2 emissions uh, must be reduced to avoid serious climate change. To manage CO2, governments and industry must work together. Government action is needed and we support an international framework that puts a price on CO2, encouraging the use of all CO2 reducing technologies. I mean, I could go on and on. All this information is in the public domain. Not just the fossil fuel companies themselves are in agreement that human activity is causing the planet to dangerously warm. The financial institutions that are themselves financing this extraction also agree. Here is JP Morgan on 21st of February this year, yesterday. We cannot rule out catastrophic outcomes where human life as we know it is threatened. It's a global problem but no global solution is in sight, their report added. No solution in sight! What glasses are these twats wearing? The solutions are right here, shining on us, blowing on us, washing over us. The only reason we're in the disastrous situation today is because of the downright lies that these corporations have spread so that they can continue to make huge profits at the expense of the rest of us. And the only thing that enables these corporations to continue to destroy our future are the dumb fuckers who believe right-wing think tanks and knobhead politicians over the scientists whose salaries we pay to warn us of things like global warming. In closing, let's just look at the situation. The fossil fuel companies admitted in the 60s and 80s that their product, if used at the current rate, would raise CO2 levels and global temperatures. This has already happened. The companies themselves admit today publicly that their product is causing the climate crisis. And their financiers also admit that their burning fossil fuels is causing the current climate emergency. Surely that is case closed. The man in the dock just put his hand up and admitted that he shot the woman on Fifth Avenue in cold blood and then dumped her dead body in the Hudson River. But Scotty from marketing and Dave down the fucking nag's head know better. These are lies. The fossil fuel companies are lying again. They are pretending to be causing climate change, but they aren't really. Why? You tell me, motherfucker.